Sun Horse is here. The Sun Horse. The Sun Horse I know. The Sun Horse I recommend to anyone. The Sun Horse that produce great leaders. I'm Amy Chapman, and I flew to Belize to find out what the British Army are doing here. I followed Sandhurst teaching 24 Belizean cadets about leadership. Don't ask people what can they do to help you. Ask what you can do to help them. But what I discovered was that Sandhurst was teaching Belize a completely different lesson. The males usually view the females as the weaker sex. However, we have to work as hard as or maybe as faster just to be or to prove a point that we belong here too. I joined BFPS Creative 18 months ago and this was my first overseas trip because of the pandemic. I don't have a military background and I was interested to see why Sandhurst are bringing a course on leadership to Belize. I was greeted by Jamie Hall, the officer commanding Marne Company from Sandhurst. It's my third time in Belize, a country that I really do love. Every time we're here, we're made to feel so welcome. And it's uh, a real honor to be here training the Belizean Defence Force. Belize is a country I think we all find incredibly beautiful. It's got so much wildlife, conservation. It's the only English-speaking country uh, in Central America. We arrived at Price Barracks, where the British Army Training Support Unit Belize, also known as Batsub, is situated. Belize became independent from Britain in 1981, but even today, Britain still has soldiers here. Let's get a little history lesson. Welcome to Belize uh, on this fine, warm, sunny day. The British Army have had a long and proud history here in Belize. You can actually date it back to about 1798 and the Battle of St. George's Key. The people that were in Belize at the time decided that they didn't want the Spanish to impose their will, so they managed to get message to the British, who managed to get seven ships and approximately 150 soldiers, marines on board the ships. They arrived here, they had a skirmish with the Spanish and had a battle here at St. George's Key, which is commemorated every year. We planted our flag and claimed the place as British Honduras, and that has endured and secured our legacy with Belize ever since. In 1972, the name was changed from British Honduras to Belize, paving the way for full independence. I don't think you could find an army or a defence force that is as similar as the British. Clearly the, the history there, we were sort of, they were born out of a very strong presence from the British forces here in Belize. When I was like four or five years old, there would be a chopper, the helicopter that lands at the BDF camp. And we would normally go and run there for our little rations that they have. And that was the first moment I know about British soldiers. I wasn't really aware of them being present in our country. But at that moment, I know that our country had some sort of ties with, with the British Army. I think the people in Belize just see the British as our history because we believe that the, the British made us. You know, that is where all our history comes from and we adapt to that, that lifestyle as well. So we, we still look up to them as, as a great partnership for our country. Salute. Salute. I had a little to no knowledge about Sandhurst before this. I did a little research about the company and get to find out that it was mostly made for royals. So when I found that out, it gave me this great joy to be a part of something this great. I think it's no secret that Sandhurst really is a world centre of excellence for leadership. It's where all of our army officers go. What we do now as a, as a company is uh, we take that values-based leadership, which is at the very heart of the training we deliver, and we're bringing it out to parts of the world where perhaps we couldn't afford to send our manpower before. So it's a real sort of capability uplift that we've, that we've established in Sandhurst. This is the first course that we've done like this uh, overseas, uh, so um, a, bit of a bit of a training exercise for us as well as to how we deploy and how we deliver. But the lessons being taught by the officers from Sandhurst go beyond just leadership. This is the first time 
I've worked with so many females on a course. So for me, it's a new experience. I know the world is going in that direction of putting female in command positions. So this course, it has opened my eyes to see how best to interact with them. A third of the course are female officer cadets and that to me has been something quite remarkable um, and I really do applaud the Belizean Defence Force for how they've, how they've filled this course. I think we brought quite a lot from the UK in terms of inclusivity, um, uh, making sure that everyone is truly an equal, uh, looking at our behaviours. We've had some excellent webinar support from back in the UK, uh, some voices of experience. In a male-dominated organisation, it is really difficult for us to, to strive. So working with another female will somewhat build that confidence for you. Well, not somewhat, will build that confidence for you. I have four big brothers and technically I view myself as one of the boys too. I was raised like one of the boys. There was no girl, it was one of the boys. The clothes was restricted as the only girl. I couldn't wear any sleeveless shirt, any short pants, no makeups, no nail polish, none of the girly stuff that um, other females would do growing up. My mom, she didn't picture myself being in the BDF. She wanted me to finish my career and be a nurse. So I know Belize is probably a little bit behind, but we're getting there. And most of the males, most of them on this course, their mindset has changed. Mine has definitely changed a lot. No matter how hard the situation gets, we never give up. Even if we're in pain, we never give up. We're used to pain. However, we also give the guys a sense of emotional intelligence. When it comes to males, they're due to their masculine strengths and focusing on the robustness. However, we give them a soft side to understand different situations and a different perspective. After two weeks in the classroom, learning what it means to be an officer, the cadets headed into the jungle, and it was time for me to join them. We're on our way down to the Humanity Training Area where the Commissioning Court Short overseas is currently exercising. What you're going to see today is them delivering a platoon attack after they've completed their panic cycle. It's rained continuously this past week. When it rains here, it really rains. The officers and cadets sleep in hammocks and wake up in puddles every morning. It seems the hammocks weren't very waterproof. So I'm an instructor from the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. Um, we've come here to deliver the Commission course short overseas in Belize to enable the Belizean Defence Force, the police and the Coast Guard to gain a commission. So it's been a five week process all so far. We did two weeks um, in camp and then we've pretty much done 11 days out here in the jungle. I get to the training area just in time for the big jungle attack the cadets have been preparing for. The cadets were ordered to secure an area where their former instructors were acting as enemy forces. So now they're coming up to the secondary enemy position. The enemy being quite crafty is now fleeing, so they now have to decide how they're going to reconfigure themselves to pursue that target. Let's go, let's go! Come 
So that's the second position taken. Um, and in terms of timings, that's been, that's been really quick. Lots of aggression, lots of motivation and enthusiasm. It's good. They've taken the third position. They've taken casualties. And this is where their orders and their SOPs are really tested to make sure that everyone understood what would happen if they took a casualty and what their part in that plan is. I am so sweaty. Not done that much running for a long time. <laughs> I had always imagined military training to be a lot like Call of Duty. But whilst out in Belize, I realised there's a lot more to it than just running around firing weapons. My highlights of this course was the leadership phase. Because present in our organisation, it's something I see that we're struggling in. Some people describe leadership by physical robustness. However, it is not about that. It is about how approachable, how reliant you can be on your leaders. Level two. Everybody is of the same value. The only difference is, obviously, there are some physical differences that you can't oversee. It is our duty on both parts to ensure that we compensate for each other's shortcomings. So regardless of your sex or your, your limitations, whether it be physical, we just try to do the best with it and understanding that there is a difference and we just have to work with each other. Yes, we understand that we're fighting for equality. However, you must have understand that our body structure is built two different types of way. So in allowing to have two different types of beating and also focusing on the science and the body structure of a female and male construct. Right, left, right, left, right, left. We've seen Sandhurst talk about leadership on the battlefield and even issues like equality went off them. But the lessons go both ways. It was the Belizean Defence Force who filled this course with a third female cadet. That's a statistic the British military would love to have in their own recruiting. So honestly, with this training, with the Sandhurst training, I think it would greatly impact the way how BDF will further progress. It will change the way how we lead and also change the way how we train. I had a question from my commandant. He asked me what was the major thing that Sandhurst developed on it was on personality. Regardless of what you bring to the table, if you know how to treat people right, and if you, you add value to people's lives, you're, going, you're on the right path. So regardless of lack of resources, regardless of the situation you're in, whether good or bad, if you add value to people's life, you'll never go in the wrong direction. And I think with our people that are graduating from this course now, I think it's going to be an infectious outpour to the entire organization. So I, I hope in the next 10 years I can look back and say, well, this was the beginning for something greater. Sandhurst course is actually a great enabler for us in terms of creating our third battalion. It will give us the young officer corps that is needed. Right, let right, let right, let My experience here has shown me how important it is to have strong leaders in the military. I'd be lying if I didn't say I was surprised by the impact Sandhurst was having here on both Belize's growing military and the confidence of the young women in it. Next time on Access. We're here at Union 3, which is home of the Iraqi Security Forces Command, and it's also home to several international military organizations and coalitions. So I'm going to try and figure out what's what here and hopefully show you guys around. Let's do it.